One of the things that you raised in, in your um, discussion this afternoon was the increases um, that we've seen in, in philanthropic organisations right. who haven't previously been in, involved um, now wanting to kind of play a role in, in refugee responses and, and migrant responses. Can you tell us yes. a bit about that? Well, I, I think that's to some extent been driven by some of the rhetoric we've seen in the United States that has been targeting refugees and immigrants or migrants, uh, particularly unaccompanied children and refugees over the course of the last year and a half. And uh, you know, as regrettable as that is, there has been a corresponding response to that. So what I have heard from both in my own discussions with philanthropic groups and NGOs is there is um, an, a, a, you know, a nascent and building interest in philanthropic groups, family foundations, community-based foundations that have not traditionally given to refugee and migration issues that are interested in doing so. I think uh, you know, those interests need to be cultivated, and I think it also is like um, a lot of other philanthropic arrangements, figuring out the best way to focus those interests in ways that work uh, for a foundation that's new to the field. And they can also work at a time when the field is in such um, flux. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a, an interesting mating process. And I think, but I think there's a lot of potential because the, there has always been philanthropic uh, engagement in the refugee field in particular. But I think it's, uh, it's certainly needed at a time when government funds are and programs are being reduced and looking at creative alternatives and relying on um, philanthropic engagement both as a donor but also as an advocate for these programs is, I think, critically important. So in the current uh, political upheaval in response to um, migrant and, and refugee services, what kind of new models um, are people thinking about or are there new models out there to consider? I think there are a lot of new models, but I think the, the political landscape is changing so quickly, it's incumbent upon the organizations that serve refugees and migrants to be very agile. And it's been difficult to do so. But I think, you know, looking at, you know, are there other different vehicles for protection of refugees and migrants, uh, particularly refugees, that is, is my field that I focused on primarily. So, or are there alternative pathways of protection? or uh, for them to access protection, whether it's student visas or family unification visas or other means of getting protection under a diminished refugee program where there may be fewer and fewer slots under those particular programs. So I think that's an area that needs uh, further exploration. Uh, it's, it's always been part of the program that some refugees find protection through family unification visas or work visas or but I think it needs uh, careful re-examination in the current context. 